First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. John G. Tellis for the uh, incredible integrity and courage he showed in the November 19, 2009 statement that he made to the board that's led to this uh, symposium. And um, I'd like to present a somewhat different approach on this, and my talk is on a broader subject uh, on carb diesel science from 1998 to 2010 and um, because I've never personally met most of the scientists in this room I thought it would be appropriate to give a little background on myself um, how do I then uh, I received a PhD in experimental elementary particle physics at Stanford University in 1970 from um, Nobel laureate Melvin Schwartz. And it was from Mel that I got the great enthusiasm I have for science that's lasted now for 40 years. And um, I, in addition, when I changed careers and became an epidemiologist, I got incredible training at UCLA from probably the two most renowned epidemiologists at UCLA, Roger Deedles and Lester Breslow. And I'm particularly proud of the almost 40-year relationship I've had with Lester Breslow, who's widely known in California as Mr. Public Health. Next. Um, because of the research I did in the 1970s, I became a fellow of the American College of Epidemiology the first year that the college was organized. And I have a certificate here signed by Abraham Lilienfeld from 1981. Um, I've tried to examine the um, qualifications of people associated with CAR because of my involvement with the report that has led to this symposium. And unfortunately, I can't find any uh, employees of this organization that really belong to uh, the American College of Epidemiology, the Society for Epidemiologic Research, or the American Statistical Association. And I, I think it's really appropriate. They should have some epidemiologists and statisticians. In fact, I'm not even sure if they have a single PhD epidemiologist um, employed in 1,300 employees. I think it's really important that um, this be kept in mind uh, when evaluating some of the reports that come from the organization. Next. Um, because of my, my background in two areas of science, I sort of ranked the um, what I consider levels of science. Um, physics is um, is a rigorous experimental science with independently verifiable results. And since 1901, it's resulted in an annual Nobel Prize. Most of them for experimental physics, some for theoretical, um, but. That can't be said for chronic disease epidemiology. Uh, it's an observational public health science often involving weak and inconsistent relationships that rarely withstand independent verification. And um, another level down in my estimation is air pollution epidemiology which suffers um, from the ecological fallacy, which means that you're not actually measuring air pollution levels on individual subjects. They're imputed from um, levels that are generally uh, obtained from monitoring stations that um, are not necessarily representative of the actual exposure of the individual subjects. Also, there's geographic variation in uh, air pollution epidemiology. And there's often trouble with gaining access to the underlying data. Um, because of my training, I've become extremely sensitized and I've always had an extreme interest in ethical conduct and scientific integrity. And um, I would like to 
go over three documents that are relevant, I believe, to the situation at hand. Uh, first of all, so because I've been at the University of California since 1971, um, I'd like to point out there are University of California standards of ethical conduct. And just the, the middle quote there is, Members of the university community engaged in research are not to knowingly omit data or results to misrepresent results in the research record. This is also known as uh, a process called falsification. Next. I was looking for a perfect quote to describe my concerns today, and lo and behold, three weeks ago, in a lead editorial in Science Magazine, appeared uh, this quote from the president of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, Ralph Cicerone. Quote, Public opinion has moved toward the view that scientists often try to suppress alternative hypotheses and ideas that scientists will withhold um, data and try to manipulate some aspects of peer review to prevent dissent. I think this is a very, very um, troubling statement, and it shows the level at which uh, this concern has gone. When it goes to the president of the National Academy of Sciences, it's pretty much reached the highest levels of science in the United States of America. And I think people have to keep this editorial. You should read the entire editorial, and all the statements that are in it are very, very important. Um, next. Um, another aspect directly relevant today is a policy um, by the Health Effects Institute which um, applies to studies that they've published, a number of which have already been mentioned today. It says, access to data underlying studies of the health effects of air pollution is an important element of ensuring credibility, especially when the studies are used in controversial public policy debates. It is the policy of the Health Effects Institute to provide access expeditiously to data for studies that it has funded and to provide that data in a manner that facilitates review and validation of the work. 